Alright, yeah, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena. And today we're going to be taking a look at a sweet, sweet deck for Standard. It has been a long time since I played Standard. Uh, I'm sure some of you do enjoy Standard from time to time. So I figured I might as well take a little step back with a pretty sweet little list that I haven't played on the channel before. And it is a one turn kill combo deck. I guess it's combo deck. It's a one card combo to a certain extent. It's built around the card Storm Herald, which is a 3 mana 3-2 three, with haste. When it enters the battlefield, you return any number of aura cards from your graveyard to the battlefield and you can attach it to creatures you control. However, you have to exile those creatures at the beginning of your next end step and if they would leave the battle uh, battlefield, exile them instead of putting them anywhere else. So the idea is that uh, we get to use Storm Herald to uh, reanimate all of our enchantments out of our graveyard, or our auras specifically. So the auras that we're going to be doing that with are going to be all the glitters, setters and training, warbriar's blessing, and mantle of the wolf. So all the glitters, I'm sure most of you know from Boggle's decks, is a plus one plus one for each artifact and enchantment you control. So it's a really good way of producing a large creature. We've got Mantle of the Wolf in here to do a similar thing. Four mana, give plus four plus four, but when it leaves the battlefield, you make two two two. So really nice at giving you another body uh, to put all of your enchantments and orders on, which is pretty cool. Warbriar's Blessing allows you to fight a creature you don't control with whatever creature you've attached Warbriar's Blessing to. So when you make a big creature, you can then kill your opponent's board, which is really good at stalling out the game. We can attach those to our early game creatures, which are going to be helping us self-mill. And we can use that to stop our opponent from having an overwhelming board state. We have setters and training as well, because if we make an all the glitters and mantle of the wolf up uh, a big, huge creature, if it doesn't have evasion of some sort, then it's not really uh, gonna matter what power and toughness it has. So setters and training draws us a card, filters us through the deck, but also gives trample to our big creature. So we can have like a 2020 uh, creature. Uh, with all of these enchantments and then give it tra uh, trample with sets and training which is very good. So how do we get all of these auras into the graveyard for Storm Herald you might say? Well we have Maya Triton, Glowspore Shaman, Gorging Vulture, Binding of the Titans and Timoret Calls the Dead. The rest of the deck is all self mill. So let's go through some of the important stuff. We've got Maya Triton as a really good board stall tactic since it is a 2-1-4-2 uh, two with Death Touch. It's really good at stopping your opponent from getting in with their big creatures that don't have any kind of evasion. I mean, we can just Death Touch and kill pretty much anything our opponent swings in with, which is very nice. It also allows us to self-mill, gains us two life to stall the game out against aggro decks. Glowspore Shaman is a really good early game card as well. Uh, a 3 1 for 2, so a really good blocker there. Uh, mills 3 cards to help our strategy along, and if we need to make our land drops, we can put a land from our graveyard that we've milled over on top of our library. So, ensuring that we're going to make our land drops is pretty key. We do have 22 lands in this list, so things like Glowspore Shaman and Binding of the Titans can be very useful in that strategy. Should say as well that our top end is 3 mana, so we don't really need all that many lands to begin with, uh, but it is nice on occasion to play two cards a turn, which ideally means that we'll have five lands by the end of the game. We've got Binding of the Titans, which has uh, a couple of options, a couple of uh, things that we can do with it. The Chapter 1 allows us to mill three, so helping the self-mill strategy. Chapter 2 can gain us two life by exiling creature cards from either graveyard, so if we've got some spare glow spores or my tritons in the yard, we can exile them. Ideally, though, we just exile whatever's in our opponent's graveyard as well. So, could be useful in a reanimator strategy if we're up against that matchup, because we are going to be milling them with the chapter 1. So, if our opponent's graveyard matters, the chapter 2 will make it matter less. And then the chapter 3 allows us to return a creature or land card from our graveyard to our hand. So, again, giving us those consistent land drops similar to Glowspore Shaman, but also allowing us to pull uh, Storm Herald from out of our graveyard. So, we don't have to top deck Storm Herald, we can actually mill him over, which gives us a lot of... Uh, card selection in this deck, which is very good. Gorging Vulture, another self-miller. The best self-miller, ideally, as well, uh, at the top end, milling four cards over total and gaining his life for each creature. It has flying, so it's really good to suit up with all of these enchantments uh, that we've got that maybe are not going to go on Storm Herald. Uh, the ideal alternative strategy is just to suit up these creatures, and if they die, 
uh, in response to removal, then it's just more auras that came from our hand into our graveyard for a Storm Herald later, so it's not too bad there. Finally, Timurek Calls the Dead has two chapters that both do the same thing, milling three, and then we get to exile an enchantment or a creature card to make a 2-2 zombie, which can be suited up on Storm Herald. So um, we're going to be trying to mill, ideally, uh, the Binding of Titans and Timurek Calls the Dead, with the Timurek Calls the Dead, since uh, they're not something that we can really recur. And then the Chapter 3 allows us to stall the game out once again. But the 2-2s two are really good for a Storm Herald, so if this creature dies, we can attach the auras as part of its trigger to juice just any other creature, and it produces some blockers for us. So the mana base is not too much to talk about. 22 lands, as I mentioned, so uh, a 2 lander in your opener is ideal. We do have one planes just in case we need to actually hard cast all the glitters and we have four fable passages of which to fetch it. Other than that though it's just 3-3-3 three, three, three on the shocks to make sure that we have untapped lands without having to pay too much life because aggro can really hurt us so we want to make sure we're just drawing all of our untapped lands and not having to pay too much life. But yeah, that's essentially the deck. If you do enjoy the list then make sure to engage with the video however you choose. Uh, suggestions may include liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment down below as to what you think of the deck, maybe what you guys are playing. Uh, I would in be interested in more suggestions for standard decks as well, uh, something on the playability scale. Uh, so nothing turbo jank, I can come up with turbo jank all on my own, <laughs> thank you very much. But if you guys have been playing anything interesting that's been doing pretty well, leave it down in the comment section below, I'm interested to hear what you guys have been piloting and then maybe if I like it enough I'll play it on the channel. But without further ado, let's continue on shall we? This video is brought to you by the generous support of our wonderful patrons and channel members that you see here. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to cool content like sneak peeks, bonus videos, polls on future content or access to a personal deck critique from myself every month then hit the join button below the video or check out the patreon link down in the description below. With all that said, let's get into the gameplay. Alright, we're in, and this looks like a reasonable enough hand, we've got a little bit of self-mill, self-mill, and then see what Storm Herald can do. It can potentially kill our opponent with the right milling, so who knows? Alright, we're gonna keep... We've even got a decent mana base as well to go with it, and we could set some training up the Triton just as a... as an extra way of putting an enchantment into the yard, I guess. And there's more self-mill. Okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna lead off with the Triton, do a little bit of milling. Essentially got everything we need. Two Warbrise Blessings, which means that my Storm Herald can fight two times, should he choose to do so. And they've got Nessian Horn Beetle. Okay. I guess I'm just going to lead off with Timurek Calls the Dead. Get that going. Um... Yeah, next turn I'll do something like Glowspore Shaman... I might want to put a land into play, actually. For next turn. So maybe it's Glowspore Shaman. Yeah, go on then. Alright, there's a land. Fantastic. Let's put that on top. And swing for two. Totally fine with me. That Horn Beetle could have grown bigger. And now it shan't. I'm totally fine with that little trade-off. We got our land now. Which means we can do Setters and Training, draw a card, give Glowspore Charm and Trample and trade off again. And then we can do Binding of the Titans to fill up the yard. Putting Setters and Training in the graveyard for Storm Herald. And getting a land drop for next turn. I'm sure they'll probably trade off here. Since they traded off last time, I can't see why they wouldn't again. So there goes Glowspore Shaman, and then we'll do a bit of Binding of the Titans. Hmm, Mantle of the Wolf. Okay, that's not too bad. Still not ready to go for our Storm Herald just yet, but it does fight and have Trample, so that's not too bad. Alright, so we're going to exile their creatures out of their yard for a little bit of life gain, a bit of delay tactics. And we'll do Maya Triton, mill over the yard, have a blocker. Not bad. And then we will... Timurek calls the dead. 
So we can exile a creature or enchantment. So we can get rid of, I guess, Maya Triton. And put a zombie into play. And I think next turn we're ready to do a huge swing. I don't know what uh, Storm Herald's doing in terms of power just yet, but I'm sure it'll be just fine. They rabid by my death toucher. Okay. Well, no blocks, because we're still above our starting life total, even with that hit. Okay, gorging Vulture. Okay, so we're going to mill three. And we will put... I think it's Glow Spore Shaman here. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so we'll get rid of Maya Triton. I don't know how much damage we've got, but I know it's a lot. Uh, let's see. So, all the glitters. One plus, plus one plus one for each artifact and enchantment you control. So it's plus two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Plus all the fighting, plus all of the ones. It's not enough, I don't think think, but actually it might be after I do this. But it's certainly going to be enough in general to probably win me the game. So let's go to Glow Spore Shaman. Um, I'm not going to put a land on top. I think I'd rather just have blind draws. If I haven't, if I've done the math and correctly and this is not lethal, then I don't really want to be drawing land anyway. Alright, so I would like to put that in play, that in play, that in play, that in play, that in play. That in play, that in play, and that in play. And then boop, 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 boop. Yeah, alright, so it's a 21-21 that's drawing me a lot of cards. Uh, a 21-22, sorry, with Trample that's drawing me a lot of cards. And winning the game just on its own. So I guess we did have enough enchantments in there. I really just didn't do the math, to be honest. There was a plus four, plus four hidden in there as well on the Wolf Briar, whatever it's called. So Wolf Whittler something. I can't remember. This is the Wolf Briar. This one makes me fight. And then the others maybe have trample and draw cards. And yeah, good stuff. All right, so really good showing for the first matchup. Great Fox. Oh my goodness. I'm a big fan. All right, we're going to go with this one, I think, because we got turn two self-mill, turn three self-mill. Not a big fan of having all the glitters in our opening hand. You really just want to mill it over, but we do have lands to actually play all the glitters. And yeah, I think this is otherwise just fine. So we're just going to go stomping ground tapped. I realize that my deck tracker isn't here. Yeah, well, I like to have it up for, for you guys to see it. Just in case you uh, end up skipping the deck tech, then there's always the deck tracker to look over if you want to reacquaint yourself. No need to go back and uh, look things over. Okay, so into the story, Cry the Carnarium. So they're going to be milling us, which is not good for them. So this is going to be interesting. I mean, if they have, like... Yeah, that's totally fine. Um, I guess taking Timurek Calls the Dead. Could be Gorging Vulture, I guess, but I'm sure they've got a little bit of removal in there, right? Apparently not. Okay. So, they could have Tyrant Scorns, could have Drown in the Locks. Uh, we will get rid of these into the stories, I think. Keep their graveyard nice and small for what it's worth. Which I'm not sure what it is worth. <laughs> Alright, so we're just going to go Shock, Gorging, Gorging Vulture. I'm just going to pay the two life to have an unknown in my hand. Potentially encouraging them to Thought Erasure me again. And nothing that they know of is actually worth worth my time as far as Thought Erasure is concerned. Okay, so Binding of the Titans goes off. We got our white sauce for all that glitters. And... I think I'll just go with a Maya Triton here. Back into my hand since we got all the lands in the world anyway. And we can keep that self mill train going. Choo choo. Maya Triton rolls over. Nothing particularly good. Okay. I might just go Setters and Training. This thing can't block, right? Can't block unless you have four. Oh, it can block. Okay. Okay. Well, that's fine. I think I'll just do a redraw thing. 
We'll stick this on the Maya Triton because the way Death Touch and Trample works means that only one point of damage is enough, uh, is required to kill our opponent and then Trample says excess damage goes past the creature. So Maya Triton blocking Gargoyle would uh, deal two to our opponent's face. So I'm guessing they're going with all the Glitters because it's, uh, it's plus two plus two. So we'd be swinging for five with Maya Triton dealing four and killing Gargoyle. I mean, they can absolutely go for Gorging Vulture if they really want to. We've not really hit very well on the self mill, I'll be honest. We've not had many auras in here that we'd want to get back with a uh, Storm Herald off the top. We've milled over the cards that would get back Storm Herald if we milled him over. So there's a hell of a lot going wrong here. I'm going to take the five. Swing him back for five anyway. Merfolk Secret Keeper. Totally okay with me. Alright, so off the top we get ourselves an All That Glitters. So we're going to play Gorging Vulture. Alright, there's a few auras, I guess. And then we'll slap this down on Maya Trite and make it a 5-3 Trampling Death Touch. Okay. Pressure's on, I suppose. It's not much pressure. I'm sure my Triton just dies in one shot here and we're empty-handed, so we'll have to see. It's all going to come down to uh, our opponent not exiling my entire graveyard and top-decking Storm Herald, I think is what this is going to be. So, yeah, they managed to roll over some pretty good stuff, actually. So Storm Herald is a one-turn kill now. So let's just top-deck that. All that glitters. Okay, well. Time to pump it up. I'm swinging for three. I guess we could double block, but we get blown out by a drowning lock anyway, so. Uh, take nine. Yeah, sure. Take nine. Storm Herald, one time. One time, Storm Herald. I mean, they've got drowning lock, right? Oh! Maybe? He's done it. Alright, so I will have an Alder Glitters, a Setzen Champion, a Mantle of the Wolf, a Setzen Training, a Setzen Training, Warbriar's Blessing, Alder Glitters, and a Warbriar's Blessing. Uh, blessing will go here. Alder Glitters will go here. Uh, blessing will go here. Setzen Training will go here. 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 <laughs> here. All the glitters will go here. Okay. So, uh, fight that. Fight that. <laughs> and then we've spread out uh, lethal across uh, two different creatures. If they kill this one, then these two are lethal, I think, actually. I'm not sure how much uh, enchantments drop off uh, in terms of power, but... I'm sure we're good enough. Our opponent didn't have the answer for it anyway, but yeah, really didn't want to put all the enchantments onto one single creature because then we just get blown out by uh, like a Tyrant Scorn bounce or something like that, which would be not ideal. But yeah, managed to get it. And we leave our opponent with virtually nothing to do as well. And we refill our hand with sets and trainings, which is pretty good. Thanks, opponent, for milling me a little. Alrighty then, we're on the play, and I really like this hand, actually. We've got Glow Spore to potentially get our third land, so we can get Timurek Gol Calls of Dead going. We could lead off with Maya Triton and Gorging Vulture as well, it wouldn't be too bad. And I really like our little mana base we got here. Alright, so we do need green and black for Glow Spore Shaman, so we're going to make sure to grab either one of those. I guess it's going to be black, since most of the hand here is indeed swamp-related. Shot the Warbriar's Blessing, which is, it's fine. It is what it is. Alright, so I think we are going to go with Glow Spore Shaman. Opponent with Simic Guildgate says to me that they might actually just be playing Gates or some sort of greedy mana base kind of deck. I'm not sure if there's anything really um, that we'd want to Blessing and fight with, but let's get the most power on board. It also allows us to... Uh, grab another land as well, which I think is going to be an overgrown tomb so we can Timurek Calls the Dead. 
and get that doing its thing. Merfolk Skydiver, okay. Turns it into a 2-2. So we can Warbriar's Blessing that and uh, swing for 3, I suppose. It's not the worst thing in the world. I guess we do want to do it. I'm not sure what our opponent's playing, if I'm honest. So, better safe than sorry. Let's get that killed. And let's swing for 3. And then we could even set some training it if we really wanted to. If we draw a land, for example, then we've got a 2-2 two, two drop kind of turn. Maybe our opponent... Are there any merfolk left in standard right now that are worth playing? I really don't know. Clear. Our opponent passes. Interesting. I think we will swing first. They do nothing. Interesting. I'm going to go with Timur Calls the Dead then. I was thinking that might be a counter spell, but turns out it wasn't. Um, well then, that's not particularly good. I think I will decline all of those and not get the zombie. I don't really want to get rid of the only aura in my graveyard and one of my win cons. Which I have the potential to actually... Uh, Recur. Alright, now that's got a mantle of the wolf. Now I could potentially see Warbriar's Blessing being a reasonable exile. We get a zombie token and we get a scry as well on the next chapter, which is nice for sure. Yeah, I think that's okay. Alright, uh, let's go with Maya Triton's Setzen Training. Puts another zombie in play. Gives enough attacking power for Glow Spore Shaman to push right through and gives us a little bit of extra value. We've got the Death Touch Blocker as well. So we're totally fine with trading here. Keeping that pressure going as well is very nice. Alright, well they're at 10. So next turn we're going to gain X life and scry X where X is the number of zombies we control. So we're going to scry 2, gain 2. As long as our opponent leaves our board state alone. I mean, if they are going to go with... Okay. There's no way I expected. I was going to say, if they're going to go with killing our zombies in some way, or forcing us to block, then I absolutely take the trade on the Maya Triton. Okay. So, we could put a Gorging Vulture into the trash. I don't think I need to do that. I think I would much rather get Storm Herald going. So let's do Maya Triton. And then Binding of the Titans. Chapter 3 on that will get me a Storm Herald out of the graveyard. So let's let it build itself up. Do its thing. Looks like our opponent's playing a kitchen table-y kind of deck. There's a lot of Adapt and Counters Matter synergy. Which is not uh, a legitimate strategy in Magic the Gathering, unfortunately. But I guess if this is what the game wants to pair us against, then this is our meta we're playing against. Yeah, we've had some not particularly competitive decks, which is completely fine with me. At the end of the day, like I'm playing a fun deck. Alright, so they're going to fight a zombie token. Okay. I'm attempting to play a fun deck anyway. don't think the attack is good. We get a Binding of the Titans to exile two of their creatures. Gain two life off of that. Bring us up to 26, so we've got all the time in the world to just keep on fueling the fire here. I think we'll go with another Timurek Calls the Dead. E we rolled over an Alder Glitters, which is very good. Alright, so we can use Timurek Calls the Dead to get rid of these enchantments, because we're not really getting them back at any point. So that's just a free zombie for us there, and we'll pass with the Death Touchers back to block. So next turn, Binding of the Titans gets us Storm Herald. Storm Herald comes out and should be able to run right through all of these. Because we've got a Mantle of the Wolf, an Alder Glitters, uh, a Fight Spell, a Trample Spell... And another plus four, plus four. I think we've got enough to kill a creature and then trample through the rest. That's a shame. Okay. 
Um, so, yeah, let's do all of that. Let's get Storm Herald out. Mill over. Nothing of note. Exile. Glow Spore Shaman, I guess. Doesn't really matter because we've won. Storm Herald does his thing. Has haste. So we go one, two, three, four, five. We're going to stick them all on Storm Herald. That's an 18 18 that draws a card and then fights the biggest creature on board, giving them five points less of blocking potential. And then we all attack. Not a particularly competitive deck from our opponent, but our deck kind of did what it needed to do. It had a little bit of a, a bad mill, which is certainly a thing that can happen with the list. You definitely don't want to be rolling over pure lands. You at least want to be putting enchantments in the graveyard for Timurek Calls the Dead to actually exile. But you know what? Our opponent wasn't playing a particularly fast deck, so managed to get away with it. Let's go for another game. Alrighty then, we're in, and this hand is entirely unkeepable. We got no self millers, and we've got all the Warbrise blessings and nothing to stick them on. So, yeah, this one's just a really easy decision. Uh, this one, not so great either, unfortunately. I mean, any land is likely to be green for gorging vulture and being able to play them on to said creature. So I'm a little bit more interested in this one, this one, and then put all the glitters to the bottom. No early game kind of sucks. So I could see a good argument for actually milling this one over, but I'm going to try it and see what happens. I think any land is completely fine with this hand. Depends on how aggressive our opponent is for sure. They've got a Temple of Epiphany, so it could be the Fires of Invention deck. My Triton's not too bad. It's not going to give us a, a land drop. It's probably going to, yep, mill exactly what I needed off the top. Typical. <laughs> Absolutely bloody typical. Well, let's just hope it was a big land pocket and there's a third land on top, because otherwise we're doing nothing. Let's see what we can do. It's good. Look at that. Alright, so I think I'm just going to self-mill a little bit more, rather than suit up this Maya Triton. This uh, plays into a counter spell, but they've already got, like, burn spell, which... Our alternative play would be playing into as well, so I think we're okay. And uh, we didn't hit any creatures because I didn't hear the ding, but I haven't really looked in the graveyard. Our opponent's doing that for us. Uh, no auras, that sucks. All right, so this is about as bad as you could possibly run, I think, so far. Really don't want to see zero auras in your deck by turn, or in your graveyard, sorry, by turn three. It's not what the deck's supposed to be doing. But our alternative here is just to have removal to a certain extent and a cantrip as well. So it's not it's not bad. And by playing these, I am going to put them in the graveyard anyway. So it's not, not a problem. All right. So let's see what our opponent can do. They've got opt so far, which says to me that they're not fires of invention. I really don't know. Do they play opt these days? I thought they'd not. Thought they'd opted against it. <laughs> oh, God. To the top. It just kind of looks like a spell slingery deck. Well, they didn't have answers before. So I'm going to assume they don't have answers again. Uh, let's just go with Setizen. Actually, no, we'll Warbrise Blessing up first uh, on Gorging Vulture. Reason being, if they kill it in response, we're not losing card advantage that sets and training would have got us anyway. And if they decide this is fine, and they do have a stomp... Alright, they've got a Brazen Borrow. Okay, totally fine. If they did have a stomp, then we have more toughness to survive it. Alright, Glowspot Shaman's pretty good, actually. But I might be tempted into just playing Mantle of the Wolf on my Maya Triton. So what they've done is they've bounced a Sylph Miller, a Sylph Miller, a self-milling card back to our hand, which benefits us. 
put an aura into the graveyard which benefits us. And their board state is no stronger for it. There's Ral Storm Conduit. Ooh wee, Rick. Alright, well. It's probably important we kill that, so we're just gonna mantle of the wolf and make a big triton. Again, if they've got more self milled then. That's okay with us, so let's make this a big boy. Out of burn range, able to kill a Ral. I mean, we could, in theory, go for our opponent's face, uh, but I would need to actually draw a power increasing aura off the top to actually have that be a two a two turn kill. So I'm just going to assume that I don't, and that we can win that way. I think our opponent just hasn't got anything going on, so from there we just we swing through. So, not too bad. Swing through while also furthering our graveyard and eventually finding a Storm Herald or something nice like that. Cool. Alrighty then, we're in. And I'm not a massive fan of this hand. It's nice to have Storm Herald in your opener, but we have no turn to play. Uh... Which can be a little bit of a stickler. So I think I'm just going to mull for a better hand. And this one's a little bit better. Again, it doesn't really have a turn to play, but it's an opportunity to put an all that glitters back into my deck since I can't really cast it. Yeah, I guess this is what we're doing. Alright, so let's go with Fabled Passage, shuffle that uh, all that glitters back into the deck. Hopefully not putting it on top, because we'd rather mill it over uh, than draw it, but who knows. Alright, so Blood Crypt taps past the turn. Opponent on is it? Interesting. So, I think we lead with Gorging Vulture first, so that this has more targets. We'd hate for this to only have things that can attach the Storm Herald as our options. So, let's just... Gorging Vulture. See if our opponent has like quenches and whatnot. They do not, but they could stomp it. Alright, well, it's not the worst. We got enchantments which we can exile. We got an Alder Glitters for Storm Herald. So it's not too bad. His opponent has radical ideas in their deck, so they are kind of a draw go. Is it control? May very well be. It's possible we should just mantle of the wolf up this Gorging Vulture as a little bit of bait. Because this kind of looks like an Ionize or a Sabotage. And I'd rather these actually resolve. So perhaps we just try to bait out our opponent's removal. I mean, if it resolves, we've got a 6-6 six, six that makes two two twos when Gorging Vulture inevitably gets bounced or deleted. <laughs> Because Mantle enters the graveyard to give us the two two twos, which is pretty cool. It's not the actual creature dying that does it for us, so... Really weird start from our opponent. Maybe they're like a Phoenix deck, perhaps. But you would expect them to have shocks and stomps. Alright, so they bounce Gorging Vulture, which puts Mantle into the graveyard and gives me two two twos. So I still have the pressure. We've traded a six six four two. Two twos. Four points. Not too bad, and it's something for Storm Herald later down the line as well. Who just really needs to see a trample spell at this point, I think, to really go off. So let's go in for four points of damage. And then I think we're just going to go wide on the board with Timurek Calls the Dead. Mill over three. There's another All the Glitters and a trample spell. So we're going to get rid of the Binding of the Titans. And I think we've just won. Opponents uh, demonstrated that their bounce is sorcery speed. Ah, they're an improbable alliance list. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. So, the only thing really that we have to worry about is shock. That's really it. Uh, let's get rid of Timur. It calls the dead. But if they don't have shock, we win. It's pretty much as simple as that. So let's go for it. Storm Herald, trigger. Looks like we win. 
All right, take two Alder Glitters, two Mantle of the Wolves, and a Setters in Training to give Trample. And just stick it all on the Storm Heralds. That's a 24-22 on what seems to be turn five. Good game. Yep. And that'll do, Pig. Minus 12. Not too bad. Alright, well, some pretty quick games there, but hopefully you guys got the impression of what the deck is supposed to do. Apparently the uh, MTG uh, matchmaking algorithm will put you against other casual players, which is both a good and a bad thing, depending on what you're into. I think for a deck like this, it's definitely quite nice to see a kitchen table style opponent, for sure, because this is definitely a kitchen table style deck. It's interruptible. Graveyard height will just ruin you. And if your opponent can respond to Storm Herald, then there's potential for, um, you know, the trigger to not really do anything. You can reattach all the auras to a different creature, though. It's not actually a requirement that Storm Herald takes all the enchantments. So if you have them zombies in play or the wolves in play, then you're going to have an alternative for that enter the battlefield ability. But yeah, it can be quite flimsy if you don't really spread out all of your enchantments and your opponent has some sort of removal but it's all about playing around that kind of thing we can play around our opponent's blockers and stuff like that so it's really not too much of an issue there i really enjoy this list hopefully you guys did too if you did make sure to hit the like button subscribe all that jazz and i'll see you all next time bye bye